Well, hello everybody and welcome again to Robert's train set, again in the conservatory. And it's quite nice in here, it's, the sun's been out and it's warmed it up. So, the time has come um, to start putting these um, wires for changing the points onto the actual layout. Um, and obviously to do this, if you haven't seen this before, I need to turn this board over. So if I get out of the way and show you, I've got to, I've got to move this whole board over. Um, but I've not only got to turn it over, I've got to turn it round. Because I need the front on this side when it's upside down. And obviously if I did tip it just over, it would be at the back. So, as I said, I think in, uh, in the comments, oh sorry, as I said in the um, introduction to the last video, <laughs> um, it's eight foot odd long and this conservatory is ten foot square. Um, and that's the outside sizes. So it's going to be fun turning this round. So what I propose to do first of all is I would lo really love to turn it around and do everything I need to with it intact. So with the bottom board on because it's stiffer that way. And then I've got to take the bottom board off and put it somewhere. Now I can't put it in here because there's no room. Can't obviously leave it outside because I'm going to be a little while doing the work. So I'm going to have to try and get it in the shed, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is an eight foot by four foot shed. So it'd be fun. So I'll do some filming of that, hopefully. Um, but the first job to do, as you can see, is to clear the decks on it. Um, and it's, you know, it's quite a bit of stuff. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, and then I'll come back to you. All right. But... Uh, the one thing I would like to say, and please, um, I make these quite a bit in advance of when you see them. So this is actually, this bit here is actually being filmed on the 26th of March. And you're not going to see this until I think it's going up on the 18th of April. So it's quite a long distance, isn't it? But what I would say to you is, if you saw my... Um, video on my day out at uh, uh, Stone and Barnes in um, Suffolk. Um, I had a, a, an interesting comment from uh, somebody who said they had a layout at that show and I never saw it because there were some layouts in the theatre which I showed. I did show the outside of the theatre. and. One person that I spoke to when I was there said, oh, last year they used the theatre, but there were no signs or anything to say there were any layouts in there. Well, I didn't see them if there were any. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, a bit of a disappointment, especially obviously for him. Um, I mean, I don't obviously know at this time how well this um, video is going to do, but yeah, uh, and as it's maybe that the one and only video up there I'll have to have a look later on um, you know it's, it's a shame if um, uh, people that take all the time and effort to display their layouts don't have a fair crack at a whip so I'm hoping if the organisers of that show see this next year they will make sure they get some signage up there because it was it, there was some but yeah obviously not good enough you know hence I missed it so, my little, I don't know, is it a rant? Well, more of a public information <laughs> comment, I think. So, let's uh, get this cleared off and we'll see how we get on. Cheers. Um, could be fun. Could be fun. Yes, we'll see. Back soon. So, as you can see, I managed to clear off uh, everything that was on top. Um, Although looking the other way, what's that at the end? Why didn't I clear that off? Let's have a look and see what that's all about, shall we? So although I said I wasn't going to do anything with these 
uh, up here where I've got the, uh, the double operating uh, points I thought if I leave plenty on I can sort of get them ready so that's what I've actually done um, as you can see I've uh, bent the end of this one so that it will go into the hole like it did on the uh, sample one I did um, I've bent uh, that one up so that it will go in to the point but not done anything here and this one the same I've bent that up ready for the point operation but nothing there because I need to get the right length so I'm now going to put these um, where I put the others so there we are all ready to go uh, all in order and I've got the little pot here for the screws from the uh, board that I need to take off and uh, the other thing I thought all that scrap uh, copper I had it could make a load if I sprayed that up with the the grime the sleeper grime if I've got any left at the end of the job that would make a decent uh, scrap metal load wouldn't it I thought so there we are I've still got my sample out because I might need that to see what I'm doing and uh, yeah it's great so the only uh, the only thing left to do if I go very slowly and most of the stuff has gone on here with a little bit of um, fiddling around or here and you might notice that the the other chair has gone that's gone into the understairs cupboard <laughs> um, which just about fitted so as well so the only thing really to do now is well two things really I need to take this um, extended bit out because that's going to get in the way and I would dearly like to strengthen the underside of these so I think what I'm going to do is drill some very tiny holes in the corners right through and then I shall know where they are when I turn it over. So I'm going to do that now. Oh yeah, nice small uh, bit in the drill and drill them through and there we are. And we'll see them when we turn it over, won't we? Always don't make a tea, remember, from me. And uh, I took the uh, extended bit off where the station goes and put it down out of the way. That's all right. And then I had this um, camera set up, which we're going to see from later on. So I just rubbed the, uh, the, any flush off the front where I drill those holes through, you know. This is how we're going. And then uh, I took a picture that you saw of the camera that was taking this. So, camera watching camera. <laughs> So everyone, I don't know how well this is going to work, um, but uh, although it's raining outside, I, I really want to get this turned round and over um, and maybe unscrewed. If I don't actually take the uh, uh, board up to the shed um, now, it doesn't matter, but I would like to get it done. So the normal way I would do it, I think, would be to lift it bodily up and then turn it up and then move it and manoeuvre it around. But I think it's going to be too tall to go up here unless you go right up there. And then you've got all this stuff in the way. So I'm hoping uh, that I can sort of slide it out like that. And then slide, slide that in down to there and that into there. And then turn it over. So I've measured it and it's 101 uh, inches long. And I've measured across from the back of there to here. To the edge of this uh, unit I've got here um, and that's 97 so I've got to go three inches over uh, the top that I was going to use if you remember so I've cleared everything that's sort of fairly high <laughs> although saying that the uh, the camera as you've seen for that photograph is there so I'm going to see how I get on um, we'll have to so see slide it out like so he says like so again and it isn't that light, I must admit, but it is liftable. I don't particularly want to damage the wall. So this is the awkward bit because I'm going to get it up there. And as you can see, the, the lower frame moves about a bit. And then I've got to get around the end of it, haven't I? It's going to be fun. I think the easiest way is to go 
like that. And you probably won't see me doing that. So there we are. Right, so it's on with a little bit of uh, emulsion paint on there, I should think. Yep. Oh dear. Seems off easy enough being emulsion. Talking of uh, emulsion, um, when the builders uh, painted the outside of the house next door, they managed to get little spots of paint all over my car, even though they'd covered it up. <laughs> it was really good. But never mind, it came off just like that. So now I'm just going to, and I think I'll um, tip it up on the back because it won't damage it as much. Although I suspect that I am going to have to um, repaint this front edge, but we'll see how we go. Could have mind that light there, but yeah, we're getting there. So I'm assuming. Um, I should have moved that, shouldn't I? I'm assuming that uh, when it's got all the rails and everything on it's going to be a lot, um, a lot heavier, so it could be fun, but there's always the option to take it out there if I need to and put it on my uh, um, little tables. So there we are, um, yeah that's worked quite well. Um, I don't quite know why that bit's black. <laughs> Very strange. Oh, I know why. Yes, yes, yes. So this is where the um, station is. So that bit sticks out there. And then along there. So what I'm going to do now, off camera I think, is just unscrew this top and have a look inside. I'll come back to you. Probably a bit close. So uh, I seem to have uh, lost one of those um, bits of uh, cable something in there. So this is where I drilled those uh, slots for the point changing mechanism. So it's just a case really of uh, sanding them up and cleaning them up a bit. Which is alright. Um, yeah, I mean they don't have to be you know, perfect to be honest. Uh, and they certainly aren't. I also took the opportunity to take the burrs off of where the uh, under rail cutters are, you know, where I want to stick a bit of wood on, don't I? So I'll do that. Uh, obviously, in number 13, I do think. Um, yeah, so I'll carry on. Now, look at this one. Um, I obviously did miss a bit. So I just drilled these out a bit more with a drill, which is alright. So then it was uh, a case really of just trying. Um, to see how I get on with this, so I put it in. Um, I had a dabble with this one to see where I was, and you can see it going through the uh, the slat there with the hole. It might be fun when I come to do that. Now, um, after I undid this, I just did that and left it overnight with the tape on to stop it falling down. But I was really ready to um, get on and get these in. Um, and I didn't think it was a good idea to leave that up like that because there'll be a bit of rubbing and shaking and that when I'm doing it. So I took the shed out and I managed to get that up there in the dry. And um, as you can see, it's pretty tight. Don't think I'm going to be doing any bike rides. So it was, uh, I would use a bucket to keep it upright there. And it was sort of into the corner and whatever there. Um, so it should keep it okay. Okay, everybody it's time to get these fitted so I'm going to do this number six and if you notice what I've done is I've put a line through um, the hole um, sort of orientating it and I've also done a with me little square block just done a line off of where the hole comes out of the uh, front edge um, just to give me a rough idea so um, 
This bit's obviously got to go through the hole in there, so we'll get that there. And I would like it just to be at the end, um, you know, uh, at the front of this, uh, what's her name? So, I need to poke that in there. Now, I think I'm going to bring that back a little bit to give me a little bit of tolerance um, if I have to just slide this about a bit. So I'm going to put it there. I've got my hot glue gun here, which is heating up. So the idea is to get this bit in line with this, within reason. It doesn't have to be spot on, I don't think. And then try and curve it around so that I can then line it up with that line there. So line it up with that line there after I've got this one solid. And then uh, that's basically it. That's all I've got to do. Um, so um, I'm going to turn the camera off until the hot glue gun has um, uh, heated up and then I'll be back with it. Right, so with the, uh, the kettle boiling for my uh, one o'clock-ish tea, um, I'm ready to go because it's starting leaking out of the end here. So nice and sticky. <laughs> so let's have a go at just doing this bit. So I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. And when I did my sample one, that's all I did. It's not going to be pretty, but it, as long as it works. Try not to get it on your fingers. There we go. I think I had a bit that was a bit hard. And obviously don't get it on the wire. <laughs> so here we are. Good. So we now need that to uh, go hard. So I'll let this leak out onto the uh, little insert that comes with the so stand. You might be able to hear the, the, um, the rain beating down on my conservatory roof. And uh, this is the, uh, the time uh, when the builders next door have decided to lay the lawn in the front garden. <laughs> so it's going to get rather wet. Um, and apparently the house, as of this date, which is the uh, 28th of March, the house is on sale at the uh, estate agent. So with a little bit of experimenting before I... Well, actually, if I pull that round there and then just see... How we do now? There is a certainly amount of um, tension in that at the moment, but we'll have to see once I get the hot glue on. So uh, I think um, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to hot glue that ready. So yeah, this is this is okay. It's 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 certainly stiffer than if it was straight, but that won't hurt as long as you can push it. It doesn't matter, does it? So now all I need to do is get uh, this one level with there. And uh, seal that in. So you can see, that I've got a, a good bit of movement there uh, and it does seem to be holding very well um, these bits come off hopefully it certainly sticks doesn't it oh look at that it's actually taking the paint away so what, I'm, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get them all set up and then you know go and do the glue gun you know one or the other straight away um, so uh, if I just uh, pan out again and direct the camera to the end of the uh, display, I've got my little camera set up there, so I'll see what I get out of that. So, signing off on this one for the time being. But you can see it's you can see me, but I hope you can hear me. So, as you can see, I've got them all in their positions and taken all the labels off. Um, and what I want to do now, I've got the hot glue gun um, leaking out again and I just want to get them all done, all these.
Now I think this number eight is actually hitting the frame that is under here. So uh, I don't think it really matters because I can just turn it as long as I get it in the middle at, the, at this end, at the, this side here, we should hopefully be all right. So we'll, there we go, let's slide that down that way a bit more. That's it, and we'll have a go at this, shall we? So this one I felt that the uh, sleeve was a little bit too long, so put some shorter ones on. Right, so we go. So with uh, these ones all fitted and working, at least I think they are, yes. And they obviously will be a lot easier to move with the with the uh, the knob on the end. Um, I took a break. Uh, I'm back and uh, just finished off this last couple, so they were all done really. So uh, where do we go from there? So with the rain still coming down, um, but luckily I can do this in here, can't I? Uh, yeah, the, next, the last bit is these last two of the 11 to get sorted uh, and as you can imagine this is going to be a bit more complicated to do than what I've done so far. So uh, that will be in the next um, update which will be uh, unlucky 13 perhaps, maybe not, we'll have to see, hopefully not. And uh, the other thing I need to perhaps do is and if I come in a bit closer to this here. I've got the holes here for where the uncouplers are, the under rail uncouplers. So what I'd ideally like to do is have a block stuck onto that. Um, and I, could, I might even be able to do it with uh, the hot glue gun, I don't know, possibly. Um, but it's, it's a case of getting all these in first uh, and then seeing what I can do. I mean, I might have to have half of one here and half of one there, you know. And I've got the others that are, oh, some of them, um, are quite close. In fact, one of them I can see here at the moment is actually <laughs> straddling it. So, uh, yeah, it could be fun. Could be fun. So, there we are. Um, yeah, I think that's gone fairly well. Um, it looks as though it should work. I mean, obviously, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. But they do seem to all want to move. Uh, there's a certain resistance, but I don't mind that. You know, it'll hold the point shut, won't it? Um, or open, whichever. And I was going to do some sort of mechanism under here to, to do an uncoupler for the the normal couplings, the Hornby couplings. Um, but the more I think about it, the more I think it would be very difficult to do. Um, basically because there just isn't enough depth in my little in-between frame. So I think what I might try and do is, I have seen other people that have used these very strong magnets that are in hunt cuppings and hornby cuppings and all that, um, the magnetic ones. You can buy those I believe and if you put them in the track and then have one onto your uncoupler, i.e. into the, the bit that hangs down, uh, they work, uh, and I might try one of those. It's going to be a lot easier to do, isn't it? Now, whether I need to put them under the track, I'm not sure. I think they will probably be all right. They go between the sleepers, and then they'll be sort of disguised a bit by the ballast. So I think that might be the route I'll go down. So um, we'll now go and uh, see the pictures from the house next door, which is all but complete. 
and some of my comments on it. Um, so, um, yeah, this is the front of the house and it's looking okay compared to what it was. Great, absolutely super. Now this is almost a picture that's in the estate agent's uh, portfolio. Um, and uh, this is the back of it. And uh, there were some strange ideas of how to disguise things on here. Now the window you can see in the end of the kitchen was made smaller. And then they had to make it good. So they sort of did disguise it, make it look like brickwork, um, but not to the same texture that was there because that had a coating on it. Um, now this is the end of my conservatory so the other side of that wall is my end-to-end uh, -end. <laughs> so I'm just going to show quick uh, photos so there's the uh, the lawn turf now the weed bin there is there because they can't get it in the back garden because they didn't put a, a, a gate at the back which is a bit uh, silly so you can see it's quite nice inside it's a nice door into the uh, the front room and quite nice handles here, isn't they? Now, um, it's in, there's a the stairs, that uh, go straight up from where you come in, uh, same as mine really. And this is the front room, um, with the fireplace opening, so to speak. Um, but they are two separate rooms, which is, I think they were advised to leave them separate. So yeah, it's coming along very nice. This is the carpet, so close up with the carpet, so it's all carpeted or uh, flooring, you know, vinyl flooring. This is what whatever you're going to sit in the fireplace. Now, nothing spe special in the light system except in the bathroom. And uh, yeah, the window boards look fine, great. Now, um, in that front room, there's no um, TV socket, which seems a bit of an oversight, but there we are. I quite like the painted doors, uh, they look okay. Uh, and uh, the boiler is in that first of those doors by the uh, way out to the garden. Um, and that's the type of boiler it is. And yeah, pipe work, but it's in a little cupboard, so it's not too bad, you won't see it. And it goes through this hole to go outside. So here's the kitchen, which is about the same size as mine, really. Um, what they've done is they've made that side one a bit narrow, so that you get a bit more room, you know, to walk in, work in. And nice sink looking out over the garden. Um, and yeah, nice cupboards, plain, simple. And yeah, decent a bit of a room. Not as much as in mine, mine were a lot taller in mine. There was still somebody, the chippy was still here working, and that's how I managed to get in. So, a little bit. Of, and there's a kettle for the workers. Most important, especially for me. So, there are built in appliances. Here's the fridge and the freezer. And a uh, hob let into the top, and obviously a, um, a built in oven below. Um, yeah. Looks okay. So this is at the top of the stairs, looking down, as you can see. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a, quite a nice layout. Now this has actually been converted into three bedrooms from two bedrooms. But the bathroom is what it was. Um, it's a bit tight, but uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's there, isn't it? And I've got the shower up with the, with the screen there, so it'll work. And uh, there's this switch above the, the door into it to do the um, extractor fan that you can see there, along with that light, you know, the only special one. And there's the way in the loft if you if whoever buys it wants to do a model railway, of course. So these are the bedrooms. Um, the two are reasonable sizes, but the third one is probably better for a study. So in the blurb for the you say agent, it's two three bedrooms, you know. But yeah, nice bay windows, which I haven't got in mind, of course. Um, but yeah, perfectly nicely done. Nicely done, looks great. So this is a view through the, uh, the double doors out into the garden. Um, and uh, yeah, there's no uh, uh, gate at the end, which there should be. Perhaps they'll have one put in whoever buys it. But yeah, it's been done pretty well. So I'm quite uh, pleased with it. So yes, it's nice to have a house next door that will be uh, used, because uh, it's been two years without. Um, so that's the end of this update, and watch out for the number 
13 where we try and fit those double point operating rods that might be quite interesting mightn't it <laughs>